today's video, I want to talk about a memory metric in SQL Server called Page Life Expectancy, or PLE. This is a very common memory metric that you're going to come across when doing analysis in SQL Server. So starting off with the definition, this is basically the age that a data page remains in the buffer cache. So whenever you're whenever you issue a query or you're pulling pulling data from SQL Server, if you issue any SQL, it has to get pulled into the buffer cache before it gets distributed to your session. So what happens is it's going to get pulled, that data page will get pulled into memory, into the buffer cache, and then it'll be available for your session to be able to, to pull the data and do whatever you're going to do with it. So you want to see these the pages remain in the buffer cache as long as possible because it's a much faster to read from memory than from disk. Now it's perfectly normal for things to get paged out. There's limits. You know, you're, you're declaring a certain amount of memory that you're going to give your buffer cache in SQL Server. And after it hits that limit, it has to start taking pages out of the buffer cache and distributing them back to disk. So a general rule of thumb for page life expectancy is you like, you like to see it above 300 seconds or five minutes. And generally I like to see it much higher than that if possible. And it's very good practice to track this value over time and correlate it with your system performance. So here I'm showing a query that allows you to retrieve the current page life expectancy value. So this is a DMV view, DMOS performance counters, and the counter name is page life expectancy. And you can also monitor this in Windows Performance Monitor if you prefer there. But what I was saying before is that if you want to capture this, you can take the out the, the result of this query and put it into a table. You can add, you know, a capture date onto it and then track it over time so that you can look at trending. So troubleshooting low, low PLE values. So like I said before, usually it's an indicator of insufficient memory. So if the workload is steadily increasing and your PLE is decreasing, you are likely short on memory. So you want to at least consider adding, adding memory if that's an option. So expensive operations, if your workload hasn't changed, but there's an increased demand on the buffer pool, it could mean that outliers are using more memory. So you want to check to see if there are maintenance jobs running or index rebuilds in progress or anything like that that might be affecting things. Another thing to look into is stale statistics. So if you've got stale statistics, you might have poor query plans being generated. And if you've got poor query plans or inefficient query plans being generated, that means you might be pulling more data pages into memory than you need to. So uh, you know, a good example is what if there was an index available on a table and it only required a few reads, but instead, because your statistics were out of date, it decided to do a table scan. So I don't know, let's say the table had 10,000 pages in it. You could wind up reading 10,000 pages instead of three or four indexed reads. Here's some techniques you can use to try and fix low PLE values. The best way to do this is to actually go to the source and optimize your queries. This also comes with a bonus because if you optimize your queries, you're not only gonna improve the efficiency of the buffer cache, you're also gonna improve the speed of your queries. So these are some things you can do. I mean, basically you can drop unused indexes. How that's gonna help? Well, remember we mentioned the maintenance procedures. So if you're running maintenance on your indexes, but you're not using those indexes, that's going to take a toll on your, your, your buffer cache while that's, that's running. Merging duplicate indexes. So again, if you've got indexes that are duplicating each other, maybe one of them isn't being used, or maybe both of them are being used, but you only need one of them, you're still gonna be impacting your buffer cache with those indexes, pulling those, those index pages into memory and aging out other pages. You could also look for large queries. I've got another video out there where I actually show, you can go in and pull performance reports from uh, SSMS. So check that, that uh, video out if you're interested in looking for that you know, you're basically the top 10 queries on your server. And then you could also, you wanna know what's in your buffer pool. There's some queries that you can run in SQL Server that will show you the contents of your buffer pool. Another thing you can do is defrag your indexes. So if your indexes are fragmented, that means that you've got a lot of space on those indexes that's not being utilized. And if you've got unused space on your index pages, 
that means that those pages you, you need more you need more pages to support the index. So if you're able to defrag your indexes, you're going to have less pages, and that means you're going to need less pages in your buffer cache. We've already mentioned updating your statistics and how the wrong plan could lead you to reading more meaning reading more pages in the memory than you really need to. And something else is purging data. So if you've got data in your system that you no longer need, if you have archiving processes in place, that'll reduce the overall footprint of your database or at least move them out into other tables that aren't going to be accessed as frequently. And then it'll have less impact on the, on the buffer cache. That's it for today's video. If you learned something, please like, subscribe to the channel, and comment. And if you have questions related to page life expectancy or anything else database or SQL related, drop them in the comments and I'll try and make a video for you. Thanks a lot.